G'day, Paul here with the Business of Art, where creativity and commerce come together. On this channel, we talk about the tips, tools, and strategies that we need to help build a business around our creative work. So if that's something that interests you, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when new videos come out. As creative people, we often have a day job that we're using to help fund our creative work and everyday life. So I recently did a three month contract with a tech company and at the end of that contract, I was asked to deliver a presentation to the rest of my team around using video for video applications or video interviews, um, just to help give them some tips and tools around using video. Now, a lot of the content in that training was actually just really good information about shooting video. So if you're creating content to build awareness for your creative work or your business or building your brand, whatever it is, this will have some great advice in it for you. So. Let's go. This is the business of art. Right, script. Have an idea of what it is that you want to say. Be prepared. Don't try and wing it if you're not used to talking in front of the camera and being concise and knowing just off the cuff what it is you need to say. Take the time and write it down. And don't be afraid to have notes on a clipboard. Don't be afraid to show that in there. Don't be afraid to let them see that, that authentic you of going, I'm not usually good on camera, so I'm going to refer to my notes. And there's no problem with that. Uh, make it simple. Keep it clear and simple. Don't, again, don't feel like you've got to overdo it. You might do five, six, seven goes at it just to sort of get the rhythm of the language and don't stumble over the sentences. If you're doing a single take, then definitely practice it so that you can get a sense of when do I need to read, when can I go you know, off the page, that kind of thing. Obviously you don't want to be doing the whole thing like this. You want to find that thing like when you're debating or public speaking where you'll have a reference point here that you remember but you know the line that you're going to say and that comes with practice. So if you want to make an impact, that little bit of extra work makes a massive difference. You know, you've probably heard that old adage that the camera adds 10 pounds. <laughs> It also strips all energy. So being able to be on camera and appear like yourself, you need to up the energy a little bit. It always makes you sort of come across a little flatter if you just present as like you would in a normal conversation. Uh, it will appear a little bit less energized and a bit flatter on screen. So pump the energy up a little bit. Don't go use car salesman, but up the energy a bit because you really need it to translate through on the video. So that's a really important thing. If you look, I reckon if you searched online, you'd find a lot of those where people were talking at camera and it just starts to become monotonous because that they're not really pumping that energy. So really important thing. Think about your background. What's behind you? Because that's a representation of you. So are you just throwing the camera up in your bedroom and it's a hell of a mess and you kind of got dirty clothes all over the floor or your bed's not made and that kind of thing. So irrespective of whether you make your bed day to day, if that's where you're shooting, make the freaking bed. <laughs> right? So uh, be conscious of what's behind you. So uh, often it's good to get in front of a, a wall, whether it's a plain wall, colored wall, whatever, but just be conscious of that. So when you're doing self tapes as an actor, you're generally looking for a plain wall. Um, so that it's just a state behind you. So that focus actually then gets pushed onto you rather than the background. You don't want that distraction if you can get away with it. Um, but really think about that. You might be able to put yourself in a setting that is useful to support that sense of the video. So you know it might be a lounge room or it might be an office or whatever, wherever you're shooting, it might be contextual to the actual application but just be conscious of that space and what's around you and is it is it going to represent you well is it a distraction to the viewer which is you know the big one audio onboard audio is perfectly fine for this kind of thing so the phone cameras with the microphones on them they pick up a hell of a lot they're really good onboard cameras on uh, onboard microphones on you know DSLRs are generally these days really really good and you really don't need to have to invest in a microphone and that sort of thing if you're not doing that kind of work all the time. If it's just for a video, shooting it on your phone with the onboard microphone is gonna be more than enough. But that said, be conscious of the noises that are around you. Are there dogs barking? Do planes come over? Like I'm in a flight path, so whenever I'm shooting video, I've gotta go over the plane and we're back 
back into it and cut that up. So uh, be conscious of air conditioners, fridges, are they loud? You know, sometimes the, the fridge that's getting a bit old starts to rattle a little bit. So are there other ambient noises that are going to cause distraction? So be aware of that. But you don't necessarily need to invest in a microphone and onboard mics are pretty good these days. Lighting. Light your face. <laughs> you right? um, If you don't have any particular lighting, getting in front of a window where the sunlight's coming through is good. Just be conscious of how harsh that light is. You might want to step back away from the window. So you may have seen video footage at times where it's really bright and white on mm -hmm. someone's face and that's overexposed. So that's very hard light. We call that hard light. Hitting them, it's not filtered in any way. So you can cut that back by stepping deeper into a room but still facing the window so that the light, it's more the ambient light around that's gonna light you. Shooting in this room is actually pretty good. So when I look around, you guys don't look too bad. Often with overhead lights, you get those dark shadows here and it looks like you're in a zombie movie. Um, this room particularly isn't too bad because you've got a white desk and white walls. Um, so it's reflecting off everything. So it's pretty even light. But if you had something like even just a desk lamp that you can put some distance away that's going to throw more direct light on your face and you know to, to soften that, you just move it further away. Um, it's great to light your face. So sort of like three-point lighting? Yeah, you don't even need to go through that, like just that single lighting source. If we're, wherever you're shooting might be, like if it's in a bedroom, often it's not as well lit. You might only have one window in the room. You've generally only got an overhead light. So the phones particularly, they need a little bit more light to really capture the quality of the video. So just even if everything else around you is a bit dim, getting a table lamp and shining it towards your face is going to help just brighten your face and help you be seen better, which is ultimately what you want. So yeah, you don't have to go full scale three point lighting states. You just need something on your face. And you know, you can pick up like just a, a table lamp at home or just something and you can just have it outside of the frame of the shot, but it's close enough that it's going to just give a little bit more light to your face. That difference is really important. It can really help. You see a lot of the videos that people put out that are, you know, they're almost a silhouette because the only lighting source is a window either on the side or behind them and they haven't thought about that. So just make sure that the light is coming from the front if you can. Um, and then obviously be conscious of how bright it is in the background because if it's super bright back there, you just become a silhouette. So um, one thing I forgot to mention with audio was echo. You'll hear in this room, it's a bit echoey. And that's because we've got a lot of hard surfaces. So even, and particularly in a room this small because there is basically no furniture, there's no curtains, there's nothing. The sound is just bouncing off all of the walls. Mm -hmm. And so if you're in a room that's quite echoey, like my spare bedroom where I've started to do a lot of my shooting, there's not a lot in there, it's quite echoey. And so simply just putting a blanket on the floor underneath you and if you can, hanging a blanket on something just out of frame near you can help cut the echo a lot. Like, and that'll be enough to really change the audio state. If you don't have anything to hang just beside you, get a couple of blankets and tape them to the walls. So what you're trying to do is just soften the, the harshness of the sound hitting that wall. And the reason to have one directly underneath you is because it you know, can bounce up and down as well. So if you've got something directly underneath you that's a blanket or something that's softening that sound, it can make a big difference as well. So even just if you've only got two, one underneath you and one on a wall beside you can have a really good effect. Um, but if you've got more, then you know, tape them you know, around the room and, and it'll soften the sound and cut the echo. So framing. So for something like that, I would recommend similar to what we do for a self-tape. So a mid-shot, which is essentially from the sort of centre of the chest of solar plexus type area to just above your head, so you've got a little bit of space in the frame. If you're a talker with your hands, zoop, cut it out a little bit further so you've got a little bit more space, so it might maybe come down you know, belly button, top of pants. Don't feel like you've got to go full body because then your camera's so far away and you can't be seen. Big thing about this is making sure it's close enough that you can be seen. Mm -hmm. So mid shots are great, um, but yeah, if you, if, you, if you need a little bit more space in the frame, push it back a little bit so you can, your hands don't kind of fall out of frame when you talk. Um, it's, it looks a bit weird, so just be aware of that.
So then it's really down to the way that you're talking. Shoot straight down the barrel and talk down the camera lens. That gives you the sense that I'm looking in your eyes. Uh, if you don't have one, buy a little tripod. So that tripod that you see there, that's, um, that's a vlogger's tripod that costs about 100 bucks. But you can get tripods online for 10, 15 dollars. Little ones that are just tabletop ones like that, that you might have when you're sitting at a desk. You can get them as cheap as 10 dollars, like they're nothing. And they're just so, so good to have because you can just throw the thing on there and it's set, it's stable, it's not gonna move, you don't have to worry about it. And this is the other thing, if you're using your phone, have a think about investing in one of these if you do a bit of work. So you can set this up with your phone on portrait or landscape. Video cover letters always shoot in landscape because it gets shown, it's gonna be shown on a TV screen or a computer screen which is in landscape. So always shoot it in landscape. But these, if you're shooting on your phone, are great. They just screw onto a tripod and that just clips your phone in and they do the job really well. Thanks for checking out this video. Let me know in the comments below what is your biggest hurdle when creating video. If you want some more advice, then check out one of the other videos on this channel and I'll see you there.